In this video I'll talk about uh, stand-ins and the procedurals in M2A210. So uh, a big change after Arnold 5 had been the automatic namespacing of stand-ins. Uh, now we no longer have to care about name collisions between stand-ins because each of them have their own namespacing, their own scope. There has been a great improvement. But some pipelines faced regression after that change. For example, people who used to export shapes and shaders separately. That kind of pipeline is usually done by first exporting the scene with only shaders enabled. So you have one S file with the shaders inside and then you re-export to another S file with only the shapes and you need to make sure that you have forest shader assignments enabled. This way in the second S file you'll have the shapes and they, they will know which shader they need to find. In the past, in Arnold 4, by just rendering these two stand-ins, as I have in this scene, it used to work. Now it no longer works. You'll have an error message saying that it doesn't find the, the corresponding shader. That's precisely because each stand-in has their own namespace. So to solve that, we have now added a parameter namespace in the stand-ins. By default, it's empty. It means that it's going to be automatically namespaced. But if you want, you can set a specific namespace. And now if I go to the other standing, the one containing the shaders, and I'm putting the same namespace, character A, in both, and now it's going to work because both of them are in the same scope. Uh, as an example here, I have another, sh another standing loading another version of the same shader and with a different namespacing, character B. So now if I change the first standing, the one containing the mesh, and I set its namespace to character B, well, now it's going to find the other set of shaders because it's going to be in the same scope as the second stand-in. So that's about stand-ins and namespaces. Um, there are actually several ways of loading as files in Arnold. Uh, the one that used to be the most complete uh, was always the stand-ins because you have lots of parameters to override stuff, uh, shaders, have animated stand-ins, and so on. But there's another one, um, uh, which is to simply create a polymesh uh, with the mesh that you want to see uh, as a proxy uh, geometry in your viewport and instead of export it as a poly mesh you export it as a procedural and you set the name of the S file that you want to see in this scene let's put the same name spacing and now instead of being rendered as a cone it's going to render as uh, the stand-in uh, so that's a good way to have a proxy geometry in your viewport and still render your, your S file so uh, this way uh, was less well supported as than the stand-ins because a lot of these parameters were missing. So now we have added all the same set of parameters in both. So we can now just override the same way. For example, if I don't override the stand-in shaders, now it's rendering with the shader that is assigned here, the Lambert. And same for all the other features. You can have animated stand-ins and so on. So that's a good improvement. One last thing about procedurals is about custom procedurals. So in the past, people who wanted to use custom procedurals uh, used stand-ins for that, and that's no longer possible because now pr procedurals are specific node types in Arnold. The best way to do this is to have M2A extensions where you really control everything. But uh, when there's no extension, you have to use a metadata, either in the C++ code or in a specific metadata file. Uh, metadata maya.procedural, you can find documentation about that. But then uh, there was not much support about that in, in M2A. Now when it finds uh, custom procedurals, you have a menu here, custom shapes. And if you create it, you will see in the attribute editor the set of parameters in this procedural, uh, as well as the common shape parameters that you have in the, in the standings uh, to override uh, parameters like shadowing, etc. And yes, and then if you render it, you're going to see here it's a procedural that creates several shapes, several spheres, and it's going to render this way.